Well, we finally know where Connor Bedard's going, and he's off to the Chicago Blackhawks. I couldn't feel more sorry for this man. He has to go play for this poverty franchise that literally traded every single good player away. So now he's left with Seth Jones, Tyler Johnson, and Peter Mrazek. God help this kid. And to start off his career in AD overall, Connor Bedard's going to have medium franchise potential. Of course, that really shouldn't be too much of a surprise to anyone. Three and a half stars in puck skills, four in senses, four in shooting, three in defense, three and a half in skating, and two and a half in physical. And it looks like the attraction of the Bedard's already bringing players onto the team because they're going to be signing Vladimir Tarasenko to a four-year deal, Kevin Shattenkirk to a two-year deal, JT Comper to a two-year deal, and Marcus Johansson to a two-year deal worth $3 million per year. So it's good to see they're surrounding Bedard with a lot of young players. Of course, in year one, Bedard's going to be on that first pairing with Tarasenko and Taylor Radish. That really shouldn't be a surprise. He's going to be on this first pair. He's going to be on the first power play, first penalty kill. He's literally going to be their number one guy. The defense is an absolute dumpster fire with Caleb Jones and Seth Jones leading the way. And in between the net, they got Peter Mrazek. So this team's probably only going to win about 15 games. Before we get into Bedard's first season though, if you're sad that your team didn't win the Bedard sweepstakes, make sure you subscribe. If you think the NHL draft lottery was rigged, make sure you subscribe. And if you think Chicago was the worst possible place for him to go, make sure you subscribe. 75% of the people that watch these videos aren't even subbed to the channel. Subscribe right now, turn notifications on, and let's get right into Bedard's first season. Surprisingly, they're actually getting double that, finishing with a 31, 45, and 6 record, and they're dead last in the entire league. Nope, there's no team below them. Uh, no, I believe they are 32nd in the entire league and there is not a team below them. And you might be wondering what were Bedard's numbers? Well this poverty franchise in the Chicago Blackhawks sent him back down to the WHL. He didn't play this season. Connor Bedard's up to an 84 overall now and he's in the WHL and he had a fantastic season picking up 38 goals, 60 helpers, and 98 points in 54 games. Alright, let's just get right to next season. I don't even care Edmonton won the Stanley Cup. We're moving on. With Chicago being this big of a dumpster fire, they don't deserve the first overall pick. So they're going to drop from 2 to 3 and they're going to be drafting Tommy Callow. Heading into year 1.5, Bedard's up to an 86 overall and he's finally in his rookie season should have been in his rookie season last year but that's neither here nor there the team's looking pretty similar but we did change some of the bottom six lines and we did get ourselves a good goaltender connor halbuck three years 7.4 million that's definitely an upgrade from peter mrazic and i'm expecting this team to maybe finish with 35 wins yeah we're still not making the playoffs not a chance that's happening chicago's absolutely dialed in this season and they're ready to roll winning an additional two games this season finishing with a 33 45 and 4 record 32nd in the entire league i don't think any of us should really be surprised by this and bedard's rookie season would be pretty underwhelming with him only picking up 34 goals and 32 helpers for 66 points but to be fair he did have absolutely no one around him so i shouldn't really be that surprised and shout out to brad marchand who's picking up 121 points at age 37 wasn't expecting that from you with the lackluster season bedard's having he's not even going to be taking home the calder this season that's going to be leo carlson also shout out to consmith winner austin matthews who's now in detroit definitely not expecting him to go to detroit and former st louis legend philly who's has taken home the vesna probably should have kept you around chicago has to continue to pay for their sins so they're not going to be getting the first overall pick this this season they're dropping from one to three and with the third overall pick they're gonna be picking up michael misa that's actually a pretty solid pickup for them a great playmaker to put alongside bedard it'll be interesting to see what they can do in three to four years heading into year number three we're gonna see some new faces on the team and kubalik and jack roslovic clearly we're gonna give these guys very respectable contracts that aren't gonna be an overpayment whatsoever kubalik's gonna get 9.4 million per year for the next seven years and jack roslovic a third line guy for us is getting 7.1 this team's never gonna succeed with bedard for giving out contracts like this but don't worry guys we might be okay 40 year old Marc Andre Fleury is going to be holding it down as the backup for us. You're telling me we have absolutely no one in the system. Yeah, this team's cooked. Although the Blackhawks are finishing 26th in the entire league, they weren't much better finishing with 32 wins this season. The only reason we're this high is because we had 12 overtime losses. So, realistically, I think this team actually got worse. And with this team not doing any better, neither is Connor Bedard, as he's going to be finishing with 33 goals and 36 assists for 69 points. But don't worry because the $9 million man in Kuba League is going to be picking up 66 points. We have him for the next seven years. And Jack Roslevic picked up 33 points for 7 million. Respectfully, we're never building a somewhat competent team here. Like, if we're going to commit $9 million, commit it to a guy like Sidney Crosby. Although he's 38 years old, he's still picking up 104 points. Put him alongside Connor Bedard, and they're each picking up 120. Easy. And shout out to the Buffalo Sabres for winning the Stanley Cup, defeating the Vancouver Canucks in seven games. A matchup that absolutely everyone wants to see. The Blackhawks continue to make very competent decisions, bringing in young guys like Anze Kopitar, Kevin Hayes, and Jane Schwartz to fill out the rest of the core. But luckily, we do have one lone positive for this season as Kevin Korczynski's finally joined the team. In Bedard's contract year, I don't know what happened, but the Chicago Blackhawks have finally woken up 14th in the entire league with a 40-33-9 record and we're in the postseason. How this team made the postseason, I have absolutely no clue. 
Well, it must have been because of Bedard, because he's picking up 45 goals and 43 assists, 88 points this season. He's finally above a point a game. Next stop is the 100 point mark. And I'm expecting that in the next few years. Meanwhile, Koopa League's having an incredible season. 65 points while being minus 20 in the process. I got nothing against Koopa League. I have an issue with the guy who gave this man a contract. 9 million per year for seven years. I'm never going to get over that. In the first postseason for Bedard, things went exactly as planned as the Chicago Blackhawks are going to be falling in five games to the Colorado Avalanche in the first round. In Colorado, they're going to go on to win the Stanley Cup. I want you guys to remember this. We lost to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. Just keep that in mind for the rest of this video. Losing to the eventual Stanley Cup champs. Bedard's first postseason wasn't terrible. He's still picking up four points in five games, but if you're going to be the star player for this team in the face of the franchise, I'm going to need a bit more. After the 88-point campaign from Connor Bedard, it's finally time for him to secure his bag, and he's gained way less than I was expecting, $9 million per year for the next six seasons. Chicago's getting an absolute bargain with this deal, so you have six seasons to win a Stanley Cup. If you don't win a Stanley Cup with this type of a contract, then i just completely given up with this team. Also, show Kevin Korczynski, $4.8 million per year for the next four seasons. Get your money. Yeah, now nah, this team's cooked. Matt Murray's our starting goaltender. Respectfully, we are cooked. And if you're wondering, well, where's all the money going for the Chicago Blackhawks? Well, it's actually not going anywhere. We have 20 million in cap space. Yeah, because why would we sign NHL players? That just doesn't make sense. Matt Murray, I was not familiar with your game. I didn't think you were him anymore. We just finished fifth in the entire league with a 48, 25, and 9 record. Okay then. With us finishing fifth in the entire league, I was expecting Bedard to be putting up like 130 points. He's only picking up 51 goals his first 50 goal campaign though. 89 points. How are we this good? That doesn't even make sense to me. When the playoffs came around, the Blackhawks were actually able to go on a bit of a run, taking the Dallas Stars down in the first round in seven games. But in the second round, we're going to be falling to the Minnesota Wild, who made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final. But they're not going to be the eventual champs. Florida is. Bedard stepped it up in the postseason this time around, picking up 13 points in 13 games, consisting of seven goals and six assists. So Chicago's finally going to be spending a bit of money. It's about time. We're giving Shea Theodore 10 million per year for the next four seasons. He's going to be a great addition to the defense. And he's going to help lead that because I'm not relying on Seth Jones. I refuse to die on that hill. And we also picked up a new goaltender, Byron Buckley. I don't even know who this dude is. 86 overall, but Matt Murray held it down last season. And I think we got to keep running with Matt Murray because he proved he can still be an NHL level goaltender. All right, I got nothing but hatred for Byron Buckley. 30th in the entire league with 31 wins. 30th in the entire league. We were just fifth last season. What happened to this team? Okay, Bedard, we're not talking about this season 86 points kubalik 49 and you're getting paid nine million dollars i'm sick to my stomach buckley 20 wins a 906 save percentage and a 311 goals against seattle congrats on your first stanley cup in history but yeah next season all right so the chicago blackhawks have finally woken up and they're gonna put a playmaker beside bedard i know this is a very complex decision to make when you have a sniper like bedard you want a playmaker beside him i know that's a very complicated concept to understand but i think chicago finally figured it out and they're bringing elias lynn home to the team also buckley step it up. We're not discussing what happened last season. You have to move past that and you have to prove you're an NHL caliber goalie. Chicago would be able to improve, but that's not really saying too much because we finished second last in the entire league last year or third last, one of the two. But that just doesn't matter because we're finishing 20th this season with a 41 38 and 3 record. But it's finally happened. Bedard, 47 goals, 57 assists, 104 points. He's finally cracked the 100 point mark, 24 years old. This should have happened a few years ago. But since we're refusing to build the team around you, I'm not overly shocked it took this long. All right, so Byron Buckley played 75 games this season. He had 40 wins an 893 save percentage and a 351 goals against these are not good numbers by any metric but why were you playing 75 games why were you in the net that much you're not him also shout out to the colorado avalanche for winning a stanley cup with the seth jones contract finally off the books it's time to put that money into an actual good defenseman so we're bringing owen power onto the team for the next seven years at 11.3 million teaming him up with shay theodore is going to be an absolutely unreal duo and i'm actually really excited for what this team's going to do there's definitely no way this team lets me down in any shape or form after signing owen power to the team i actually thought we were going to finish dead last in the entire league. We're actually looking pretty solid finishing ninth with a 47, 29, and 6 record. Bedard's going to be cracking the 100 point mark once again this season with 108, consisting of 43 goals and 65 assists. While Buckley, he's actually stepping it up this season, a 910 save percentage of 286 goals gains, 38 wins. With him finally playing at an elite level, this team might be able to go on a bit of a run. And they definitely went on a run all the way to the Stanley Cup final where they're going to sweep the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Chicago Blackhawks, their Stanley Cup champions with Connor Bedard leading the way. Who would have seen this coming? Not me, I can tell you that one for free. Bedard's having an incredible postseason run 16 goals 17 says 33 points in 22 games and buckley 16 wins and 909 save percentage at 270 goals against i can't wait to run it back with you next season because obviously we're going to make the smart decision and bring you back right obviously there's only one man that deserves the con smite and that's going to be Connor bedard so he's going to be taking that home and here we are heading into next season we brought william nylander onto the team on a one-year deal but where did we get the money to afford william nylander we got rid of byron buckley we just got rid of our stanley cup winning goal 
goaltender so we can bring William Nylander onto the team. I have no problems with William Nylander, but why did we just get rid of our Stanley Cup winning goaltender? So I can't really describe my disappointment in words right now. 23rd in the entire league, missing the playoffs. Why did we get rid of our Stanley Cup winning goaltender? He finally proved that he could play at an NHL level and lead us to a Stanley Cup, and that's exactly what we did. And how did we repay him? Letting him walk. Darts having himself another 100 point campaign with 48 goals and 53 assists, but I still haven't got over the fact that we let Byron Buckley walk. Especially for Matt's Lundquist here. 27 wins, 26 losses, an 899 save percentage, and a 334 goals against. He's 26 years old, he's still pretty young, but Byron Buckley was also young. Pay the man. So Byron Buckley is exactly one year older than Matt's Lundquist. Buckley's going to finish fifth in goalie wins with 38 this season. So you might be thinking, well, he probably got paid an absolute bag, 12, 13 million. That's why you couldn't afford him. No, he signed a seven year deal worth 8 million per. We could have definitely afforded that. We gave William Nylander 9 million. So instead of signing William Nylander, you signed Byron Buckley. And since Chicago's not in the playoffs, we might as well just check out who's going to win it. And it's going to be the Edmonton Oilers with Connor McDavid leading the way. But it should be the Chicago Blackhawks. We should be in the postseason right now. But we just have poor management. So obviously, there's only one logical decision to fix our goaltending problems sign David Pasternak to the team. Yeah, let's just watch this season completely fall apart for us because we already know what's going to happen. Okay, I clearly know absolutely nothing about hockey. Fifth in the entire league with a 46, 24, and 12 record. I'm convinced we're at the point now where it's just good season, bad season, good season, bad season. Because how are we flip flopping this much? Oh, we're flip flopping that much because Connor Bedard's going to have a career year picking up 68 goals and 45 helpers for 113 points. That's why we're doing so well. And the 68 goals from Bedard's obviously going to be leading the entire league, but he's going to be finishing sixth in league scoring. Don't let this season from Bedard go to waste. Get yourselves another Stanley Cup. And we're going to be doing the exact opposite of that. Although we're getting past Minnesota in the first round in seven games, we're going to be getting swept by the San Jose Sharks in the second. And after that fantastic regular season performance from Connor Bedard, he disappeared in the postseason. Two goals in 11 games. You picked up 68 goals in 82 games during the regular season, but the second the postseason came around, you picked up two goals in 11 games. That seems about right. With the incredible season Connor Bedard just had, it's time for him to secure his bag. And Chicago doesn't want to pay him. The Chicago Blackhawks, who have the face of the franchise, one of the best players in the entire league, said, nah, we don't want to pay this man. So they let him walk and he's going to take his talents to the Pittsburgh Penguins and he is getting money, money. 17.4 million per year for the next seven seasons. 17.4 million. Honestly, I completely understand why you left Chicago. If they weren't offering you this type of money, completely understand why you left. All right, I'm taking that statement back because we finished 22nd in the entire league and missed the playoffs. But do I really take that statement back? We just got 17.4 million for the next seven years. We'll see how the next few years go. But 17.4 million per year for missing the playoffs might be worth it. Okay, I never thought I'd see the day, especially in the prime of Connor Bedard's career, but he's finishing second on the team in scoring with 49 goals and 51 helpers for exactly 100 points. Second on the team in scoring. Speechless to say the least. But though Connor Bedard, the Chicago Blackhawks would somehow be able to make the playoffs, but they're going to get swept by the superior franchise in the St. Louis Blues. In St. Louis, they're going to cruise all the way to the Stanley Cup final, and then something happened, and we're not going to discuss that. There was one lone positive out this season though, because the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to jump from 11 to 2, and they're getting the second overall pick and with that pick they're bringing in NBA champion David West if you know you know so it looks like the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to be adapting the Edmonton Oilers system which is basically we're going to fill out the top six with absolutely elite players and then we're not worrying about our bottom six or our defense or our goaltending we just need six incredible players that can carry us let's see if Pittsburgh can do that well that approach seems to be working pretty well for the Penguins as they're finishing ninth in the entire league with 47 wins well Connor Bedard he's cracking the 100 point mark once again 105 points with 52 goals in the process but although we're finishing ninth in the entire league I do not trust this goaltending tandem whatsoever. These two guys were borderline splitting starts last season. Not exactly, but pretty close. And neither of them were good. So we have a goaltending tandem that splits starts that isn't good. So I think we all know where this is headed. It's headed to Shane Wright leading the entire league in points with 116. Because clearly Shane Wright's that guy. No, but what it was really headed to is the Pittsburgh Penguins getting eliminated in the first round to the New York Rangers. The eventual Stanley Cup champion New York Rangers. Just remember that. Bedard was over a point a game in the postseason, but I'm still expecting more goals from you. You're a sniper. Shoot. So of course we had questions about the Penguins goaltending situation last season. So what's the logical solution for that? Completely changing it. We've got two new goal tenders here they're both 83 overalls let's see if one of them can take the reins but I guess one of these guys is taking the reign because we're finishing sixth in the entire league with 48 wins. While Connor Bedard, for the first time in his Pittsburgh Penguins career, he's going to be leading the team in points with 101. Meanwhile, Byron Buckley is going to lead all goaltenders in wins with 46 wins. I'm still mad about that. Don't get it twisted. This time in the postseason, the Penguins are going to be able to get through the first round, but in the second, they're going to fall to the eventual Stanley Cup champion, Carolina Hurricanes. So that's two years in a row now that we've fallen to the eventual Stanley Cup champs. And trust me, it's not going to be the last. 
And I feel bad for Bedard because he locked in this season. Seven goals, 11 assists, 18 points in 11 games. He was doing all he could to help this team win a Stanley Cup, but it just wasn't enough. All right, this team's cooked. We have a 79 overall as our second line right winger. And the bottom six is absolutely abysmal. And the goaltending situation, we switched the entire goaltending tandem up once again, except both of these guys are worse. We're not making the playoffs. And if you're wondering where all the money's going, we've committed about $75 million to five guys. Our entire cap space is 100 million. So we just committed 75% of our cap up to five guys. I think it's safe to say we're not going to be looking good this season. But somehow with absolutely no forward depth whatsoever and no goaltending, that doesn't stop the Pittsburgh Penguins. But Dar's going to be leading the team with 104 points. But as we know, the playoffs are just a completely different animal. And once again, we're falling to the Carolina Hurricanes in the second round, and they're going to be the eventual Stanley Cup champions. Three years in a row now, four times in Connor Bedard's career where he's lost to the eventual Stanley Cup champs. And Carolina beat Chicago in the Stanley Cup final. If Bedard was there, they're winning the Stanley Cup. Now at this point, I actually just feel bad for Bedard. 21 points in 12 games, 11 goals and 10 assists. There's nothing else he can do. He's literally carrying the way and the team still lets him down. We have 60 overalls on our third defensive pairing. 60 overalls on the third defensive pairing. I don't care how good the offense on our team is. We're not making the playoffs. And the goaltending situation here is even worse. Didn't even think that would be possible, but here we are. Let's just get this season over with quick. So the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to absolutely stink this season, finishing 30th in the entire league. Well, Connor Bedard, a career season for him. Well, I think it's career season. It might not be, but it's up there. 114 points, 58 goals 56 assists it is not your fault that this team sucked this season it's the gm it's whoever built this team i don't know what he was thinking when he brought 60 overalls onto the third defensive pairing and shout out to Matt cronwall he's picking up 71 goals this season because why not well isn't that annoying Gabriel's leading all goaltenders and wins. Why does that name sound familiar to me? Oh yeah, it was Pittsburgh's old goaltender. Yeah, we could really use him right now. And then the greatest franchise of all time goes on to win the Stanley Cup, because why the heck not? And shout out to Zach Benson, who's averaging over two points a game in the postseason. So if you thought this season couldn't get any worse, it's about to. Boston's getting our first overall pick. Yeah, these next few years with Bedard are going to be tough, aren't they? So I think it's safe to say that the Pittsburgh Penguins have one of the best top six in the entire league. But I think it's also safe to say they have one of the worst bottom six. So I'd say we're very mid. All right, we weren't even mid. We were just awful. 32nd in the entire league. Well, let's get through this season quick. Bedard, 92 points. One of his worst of his career. You hate to see it. And Seattle's winning a Stanley Cup. All right, here we are in the next season because I'm not messing around. I can basically say the exact same thing as last season. Top six looks amazing. Bottom six looks awful. And Bedard, he's starting to decline at 34 years old. He's dropped to an 89 overall. Top six potential is the beginning of the end. We got to win Bedard in another Stanley Cup real quick. And he's also on the final year of his contract. So who knows if he's going to be sticking around in Pittsburgh. But the offense from Pittsburgh might be doing something special here because we're finishing 12th in the entire league. And we're also averaging over four goals a game. So maybe the offense can carry us to another Stanley Cup. And it looks like it will be. Bedard second on the team in scrum with 111 points. We had four guys over over 100 and then if you count David West who's at 97 points no nah, we got the best top six in the entire league but in Pittsburgh Penguins tradition, there's only one way for this team to go out. We're going to get past the first round, and in the second round, we're going to fall to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. He's been in Pittsburgh for seven years now, and in four of those seasons, we've fallen to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. Bedard can't catch a break. At 35 years old, Bedard's going to run it back with the Pittsburgh Penguins one more time on a one-year deal worth $11 million. And with the Penguins finishing eighth in the entire league, they have one last chance to win a Stanley Cup. But I think we all know how it's already going to end. Bedard's only picking up 93 points this season, so we can definitely see the decline in him, while Nico's going to pick up 70 goals and 77 helpers for 147 points. Who is this dude? I've checked the league leaders every single season and I've never seen this guy's name. And then all of a sudden he's picking up 70 goals and 77 helpers. Bro just appeared out of nowhere. So there's been a very clear theme with Bedard in Pittsburgh. He's going to get through the first round. He's going to get to the second and then he's going to fall to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. But this time it's slightly different. Columbus is making it all the way to the Stanley Cup final, but they're going to fall to the Edmonton Oilers. So I guess they decided to switch things up for Bedard's final season. With Bedard's contract coming to an end, the Penguins are going to go through a complete overhaul and a lot of the old pieces on this team are moving including Bedard so he's going to go to the Montreal Canadiens and play on the fourth line yeah he's at the end of his career these next few years are going quick Bedard's going to have the worst season of his career by far only picking up 42 points and Montreal they're going to be missing the playoffs after having a terrible season like that there's only one logical thing to happen Bedard's going to take his talents to the Nashville Predators and play on the first line so he was a fourth line guy on Montreal and now he's a first line guy on Nashville that makes sense Bedard's numbers will be a bit better this season he's picking up 55 points but once again the team seeing no success and he's going to be missing the playoffs. And the year 2043, Bedard's finally going to call it a career at 37 years old. He's picking up 855 goals, 876 assists for 1,731 points. So Bedard had himself a great career, but for some reason, always lost to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. I don't know why that was a trend, but nothing you can do about that one, my guy. That's just tough.